hardest question we're always asked, what is Christian distinctiveness? What is Christian ethos? And to be able to articulate that succinctly isn't easy. I think you have to feel it. Okay, so it's repeating the same thing, isn't it? So if we look in a minute, we're going to look at different types of art. And we're going to actually look and see if our art is that if we actually think that art is the same for each of us. What I've observed in faith schools is that ethos is much more easy to define. You've got a much more common, agreed, accessible ethos because you're a Christian school. So it's much easier for people to understand this is who we are, this is what's important to us, this is what we're about. We're a family as our school, so it's, it, I'm able as a teaching head to really keep my school together and it's the unity and working alongside the children all the time and not removed in, a, in an office and only see occasionally in the classroom or in a corridor at lunchtime, but actually I'm involved in every single part of their day. Comparing the approach to proving aliens exist, look at the left one. We go over to church and we take part in say a remembrance service or a Eucharist service, anything like that. Uh, it really does, it, it brings you all together in a way that I don't think many other things do. I think that being a Church of England school does help with the engagement of students because parents have largely selected the school because of the faith ethos. So you're not having to start from a point of view that faith is irrelevant. Um, it, th there's a, a accepted relevancy of, of faith in people's lives, even if a student doesn't have a particular faith themselves. Being around the children every day is the most rewarding job that can I could ever have. But being around children who are comfortable with loving each other openly, with understanding that it's it's um, we are a family and we love each other and it, you can use those words without it sounding wrong. We've got a special remembering just some of the very special things that Jesus taught us. What, the, what were those called? Parch. Absolutely, parch. We know about parch. Remind me. Perseverance. When a child runs up to you and says, oh, I had to tell my daddy off last night because he didn't follow parch because he didn't follow the school's core values. You know, they do pick up on their parents and they do say, you know, they haven't followed parched today and it wasn't very happy with them. And, you know, I just think that's just, you know, amazing. Agree with it or disagree with it? Now, if you take a, um, the other type of conclusion, an inductive conclusion, remember there could be an alternative then can you reject my conclusion altogether? What we're doing today is beginning to introduce some thinking on the theory of knowledge, epistemology. So we're asking the big question, how do we know what we know? How do we know if something's true? How do we know if it's a fact? Are there different types of facts? And we're trying to get the students to really interrogate some assumptions that they've made and really giving them the skills to be able to do that, I suppose, in their studies, but in life in general. The same with Joe. How did you know? How did he demonstrate it? He said you get one, add one to it. Yeah? You're sort of looking at the Joe. Rather than just accepting something as true, looking at the limits of knowledge, the limits of what is true and what is known to be fact, and the extent to which you can say something, really. Yeah, there's no way that the school is trying to convert you into a Christian if you're not already a Christian. It's just that the ideas are there in terms of how it will make you work hard and how it will help develop you, but you're not forced to become a Christian. Everyone's open to their own beliefs. It's not, in a sense, like that. Like, I'm an atheist and doing an already for me in A-level hasn't, it hasn't changed any of my beliefs. It's just changed the way I think and come to conclusions, not just about God, but about a lot of moral issues. I don't have any problems with um, with uh, encouraging children. I think my duty is to encourage children to question. Actually, I think that as a Christian, I should be able to encourage my children to actually question what I'm saying to them and ask me questions about 
you know why I, why I believe and um, I think it's important to give them the options and you know to you know even when we're having a prayer at the end of the day when all of children have a prayer or maybe in in collective worship you know there are opportunities for saying you don't have to pray with us but you can have a time of reflection I think it's fantastic to have in my department a range of people on the journey with a range of different viewpoints. Uh, broadly Christian, yes, but people that would say that they are um, not believers, certainly not religious, and at the moment atheists. Now for me that's a really valuable and worthwhile contribution to the department because um, we're, we're trying to get young people to see that, that we all have lenses, we all have filters and worldviews, and, and that's how we interpret information, it's how we interpret knowledge. And it's good to understand what your filter is, and it's good to hear other people talking with different filters and engage with one another on that basis. At the moment, I'm an atheist, and I like to tell the children that I'm on a journey, and all of us are on a journey. They asked me, they said, you know, do you believe in God? And I told them, I don't at the moment, you know. And he said, why? And I told him about how I had been a believer in my nan had died of motor neuron disease and it was a, I told him all about it and now I just felt how could he God let us suffer like that and we discussed it for a long time and he came back to me the next lesson and he said you know if this life was perfect there'd be no point in heaven would there and it's something I know from a like a subject knowledge point of view but the way he said it as a child he just said what would the point in heaven be and I said oh and I had no answer for that and I like it when I've got no answer because they They've given me the answer and it's something for me to think about, so... It gives us a wide range of uh, different understandings of where people are coming from and that each, diff no matter what background the people have got, their um, individual beliefs can still come across. One of the things we try and do frequently as a school, whether it be through assemblies, whether it be through lessons, is just to talk about the importance of serving others. And young people may or may not be able to connect that with the Christian teaching or the teaching of Jesus. We try to help them to make that connection. But I think it's something deeper. It's something about being human. It's about we recognise our own needs, our own vulnerability, our own fortunateness, I suppose. Um, and somehow want to respond to the needs of others, which is an immensely rewarding thing. To keep that, um, that feeling of love and the family, it's, it's, it's actually not very difficult now. It was difficult at the beginning, setting it up and starting to um, bring everyone on side. It's difficult at the beginning to establish, but once it's there, it actually is like a snowball. It just keeps on growing and growing and it gets stronger and stronger. Um, and I think you can see that when you're in the classroom with the children, is that they're very much at ease with each other and with the adults and that there is a two-way conversation all the time and they feel, they feel very much uh, in a very safe place. Does that look better? Yes. yes. We often have children writing their own prayers if it fits in with what's going in the lesson time or quite often people bring them in from home and uh, share them in, school, in church. We also have a, a prayer box which wasn't there this week but normally we have a little prayer box in school which the children can just place in. It's very um, discreet, no one reads those prayers and then the Reverend Kate blesses them on a Thursday service as well which is important. People are conscious of the fact that it's a religious school. Um, obviously by superficial things such as we have church services periodically we go to the Anglican Cathedral for prize given services and carol services um, but also you know things like we pray every day um, you know and a lot of people still find, you know there's a lot of it's quite hard to describe really but you can just tell people you know there's often a great togetherness in the school um, linked up by religious and religion and Christianity and uh, but that's not to say that we exclude people who aren't Christian, you know what I mean, they, they still feel part of the fabric. <laughs>